Hi, everyone. Welcome to our Building Bridges to the Community Northwell Lecture Series for Heart Health. Um, I'm Dr. Eugenia Gianos, and I am the Director of Cardiovascular Prevention for Northwell. And I am joined today by a colleague uh, who is exceptional at guiding people at how to eat, particularly around the holidays as we get prepared um, with a very, very important topic of mindful eating. So today we have with us uh, Sarah Miller, who has a master's in nutrition education and is also a certified uh, nutritionist. And um, she is working currently at our Manhasset location where they have a lipid center, a cardiovascular prevention center, and seeing a number of our patients and really guiding them to improve their risk factors for heart disease, which has been exceptionally helpful. Um, but this is not just for people who have disease already or who have diabetes or high blood pressure, or high cholesterol. This is for all of us um, because this is a season where we have a tendency to overeat at baseline perhaps. And uh, in the COVID season, I have a suspicion that this tendency might be enhanced maybe even a little bit more. Um, and we really need her guidance. Uh, so we're excited to hear um, your talk today, Sarah. I guide you, I'd like to guide you guys to the Q&A section. So you can go ahead and put in any questions as they come up in your mind. Um, we will try to get to as many as them as we can at the end of the talk. So Sarah, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Dr. Giannis. I'm really excited to be here tonight. Um, as you mentioned, I'm talking about mindful eating. I think it's a really important topic to talk about really throughout the year, but specifically now when holidays are among us and emotions and anxiety and stress is running high and food is really plentiful, um, parties are really plentiful. Uh, I think it's a really useful skill set to have um, and I'm excited to share it with you, okay? So we're gonna talk about um, what is mindful eating and who should try it. Then we're gonna get a little bit more practical, the steps becoming more mindful. So um, why we eat, becoming aware of the reasons that we eat, uh, strategies for staying mindful and present while we eat, and then of course, knowing when to stop eating. And then we're gonna get into specific holiday challenges, both emotional and social. And then hopefully we're gonna have time at the end for some review and some questions, okay? So let's begin by talking about what is mindful eating. Now, there's no one definition, it's kind of this nebulous term, but I've tried to really distill it down into its essential parts, which are eating when you're hungry, staying present while you eat, and then stopping when you're full. And I know it sounds simple, almost to the point of being silly, right? Of course, you're just going to eat when you're hungry. But I guarantee you, in practice, it can be really difficult to do. So um, I want to help you out there to, to figure out how to be a more mindful eater. Um, now, mindful eating is sometimes tied to intuitive eating. They are closely related. I would say the, the difference is mindful eating has this, this middle portion, staying present while you eat, which I think is particularly helpful, okay? Um, so let's talk about who's gonna try mindful eating. Uh, if you're someone who's really tired of restrictive diets, diets that tell you not to eat you know, a huge food group, for example, or if figuring out which foods to eat and which to avoid is adding a lot of stress to your life, right? You hear you know, from your friends that they're not eating dairy anymore and they lost 10 pounds. And then you hear on the radio that dairy is really good for you. And you just don't know what to do. That could be kind of stressful. So maybe mindful eating would be a good idea. Um, and if you feel that your eating habits are out of control, Dr. Giannis have mentioned during Corona, this happens a lot. I have a lot of patients who say, I'm at the refrigerator 10 times a day and I don't really know why. <laughs> Okay, um, and there's a really cool study that was done on just on the effects of the coronavirus on food and nutrition. It was done back in August, and 34% of respondents said that they had an increase in total food intake. 33% declared an increase in confectionery intake, that's baked goods, and then 18% said they had an increase in alcohol intake. So Corona has definitely affected us um, and has kind of moved us away from mindful eating, and I'm going to try to bring us back. Okay, um, now this is not a replacement for a medically prescribed diet. So if you are say um, insulin dependent, you have diabetes, this doesn't replace that, right? But it can be a really good tool to use in conjunction with any diet you have, any you know, eating habits that you have, mindful eating can be a really good complement to it, okay? Um, now it wasn't designed to be a weight loss diet. It's not, it's meant to increase your satisfaction and awareness of food. It's not meant to help you lose weight. That wasn't the design of it. Okay, the intention of mindful eating is to help individuals savor the moment and the food and encourage their full presence for their eating experience. 
Now, that being said, um, from a nutrition and dietetics perspective, not only does, does mindful eating increase your satisfaction and decrease food anxiety, which is very important, but uh, if done correctly, it can absolutely lead to real health benefits um, and lead to a more nutritionally balanced diet without the need to count calories, without the need to keep a food log. Uh, it's a really, really beneficial tool, okay, for anyone, weight loss or not. All right, so what didn't I mention? Calories, fat, detoxing, crash diets. That is not what mindful eating is about, okay? It's about creating a non-judgmental attitude towards food. Food is just food, okay? So that means during this holiday season, you get to eat the foods that you love, right? You choose the foods you like, you don't eat the foods that you don't like. You have to learn to trust yourself to make those decisions, okay? So that means maybe eating a cookie or two cookies and not feeling badly about it after, right? Food does not have the ability to make you feel bad, right? A cookie is not inherently evil, okay? It should not hold that power over you. Um, but by making mindful choices, you're going to hopefully learn to self-regulate. You're going to learn to eat what you need when you need it, okay? You're going to rely on your own judgment. You're not going to rely on any rules that are set by a really rigid diet, okay? Mindful eating and intuitive eating, they're not about what you eat. There's no rules about what you're allowed to eat. It's just about why and how you're eating, okay? All right, so sounds pretty good. How are we gonna get there? Um, so I broke it down into three steps, right? So first we're gonna determine why are we eating? Knowing when we're hungry and understanding when we're actually just reacting to some external stimulus, okay? Then we're gonna to learn to savor our food, enjoy it, not feel bad about it, okay? Being present while we eat and turning off distractions, that's in step two. And then we're gonna stop when we're full, okay? Learn about satiety, being able to walk away from food, okay? So this is what we're gonna, focus on. Step one, identifying the why. How are you going to get there? So to become a more mindful eater, it's really important to understand in the moment why you're eating. Now I hear a lot of reasons why patients eat, a lot of reasons why I eat. Um, these are 12 of the most common ones I hear. Could be there's another reason why you eat that I don't have mentioned. That's fine. But I hear a lot that I eat because of stress, anxiety, boredom, tiredness, sadness, celebration, social obligation, habit, communal norms, thirst, hunger, and anticipation and enjoyment of food. There's a whole variety of reasons why people are drawn to be eating, okay? Now, mindful eating tells you that you really should only eat when you're hungry, right? So these 11 other reasons maybe are not great reasons to eat, um, but they do exist. And it's important to, to recognize that this sometimes happens and these emotions sometimes do draw you to eating, okay? So let's delve a little bit deeper into figuring out emotional hunger versus physical hunger, okay? So let's start with emotional hunger. Emotional hunger comes on suddenly, right? You're, you're sitting at your computer, you get an email from your boss who tells you some assignment is due in three hours, and suddenly you say, oh my God, I need a cookie, like right now, okay? It feels like you can only be satisfied through a specific food. I don't want a hamburger, I don't want salad, I don't want a soup, I need a cookie, Okay. And it feels like it has to be satisfied urgently. I need a cookie now. Um, and it also, it pulls for you to be uncomfortably full before it eases, right? Because your issue is anxiety and you're trying to solve it by eating a cookie and you're going to eat cookie after cookie. Pretty soon you're six cookies deep. The anxiety is still there. And now you feel really full and bloated, right? The cookies didn't help. Now that's in contrast to physical hunger. Physical hunger usually comes on gradually, right? You're a little bit hungry, but you don't eat anything. 20 minutes later, you're a little bit hungrier. 20 minutes later, if you don't eat, then you're really hungry, but that built over time. It didn't happen out of nowhere, okay? Um, physical hunger tends to reside in the physical body. It's a physical feeling. I'm gonna talk about that in the next slide a little bit as well. Um, physical hunger can be satisfied through different foods. I want lunch. Maybe it's a burger. Maybe it's a burrito. Maybe it's pizza. Maybe it's a salad. All of those things sound good because I'm hungry. Um, and generally it goes away when you're physically satisfied. You're not going to necessarily overeat because you're, you're hungry. You're going to eat your meal. Then you're not hungry anymore. So you don't have to eat anymore. Okay. Um, now for some people, we need more tips. We need how really, how am I going to figure out if I'm physically hungry or not? Okay. So I tell all my patients before you eat, pause. Take a second, think, okay? Try to think, is there another reason right now that, that I wanna eat? Am I looking for comfort? Am I tired? Um, am I worried about something? Sometimes just assessing your mental state is enough. 
um, some people like a hunger scale, right? So on a scale of one to five, how hungry am I right now? If I'm at a you know, one or two on a hunger scale, I'm not that hungry. If I'm at a three or four, yes, I'm hungry right now, I should eat, okay? Don't ignore your hunger because if you ignore your hunger, you get to level five, okay? If you're at a five on the hunger scale, chances are you're, you're ravenous and it's really hard to stay mindful and eat mindfully if you're so, so hungry, okay? Um, and a lot of people ask about intermittent fasting. It's another diet that's very popular right now. And there's a lot of good research about it. It seems promising, but if you're at someone who's going to be at a level five of hunger um, by the time they reach their eating window for intermittent fasting, might not be a good idea because then you're gonna overeat, okay? We don't want you to get to level five of hunger. Um, and some people like thinking about it in terms of this dichotomy. Are my emotions telling me that I wanna eat? Or is my stomach telling me that I wanna eat? Okay, because remember, hunger is a physical sensation. It feels like an ache or a pain in your stomach. Some people feel, um, say it feels like an empty, hollow feeling in their stomach. Some people, you know, might be tired or need more energy. Personally, when I, when I was pregnant, I felt nauseous when I was hungry, but it is a very physical feeling um, and you should learn to recognize it, okay? Okay, so we just spoken about uh, how we're gonna know if we're hungry or if we're emotionally hungry. Let's say we figure out that we're on a two or three, three, four on the hunger scale. Yes, I'm hungry right now. I want to eat. Okay. How are we going to do it? How do we mindfully eat at this stage? Um, so the real purpose of mindful eating, the goal here is to bring your, your brain into this. Okay. Don't just eat with your stomach, eat with your brain as well. Now to do that, we want to use all of our senses. Okay. Um, so this might sound silly, but bear with me for a second. Okay. Before you eat, smell the food, look at the food. Okay. What does it smell like? Is it beautifully colored? Is it shiny? Is it messy? Okay. Look at it. Then take a bite, hold the food in your mouth for a second, really feel its texture. Uh, <clears throat> is it crunchy? Is it chewy? Is it soft? How does it taste? And I want more than, oh, it tastes sweet or it tastes salty. Okay really taste it. Is it earthy? Is it fruity? Is it spicy? Really taste the com complex flavors of whatever it is that you're eating. Chew really slowly, release all the flavors. Okay. And then swallow. Does it leave a lingering taste in your mouth? Okay. Try to have a full sensory experience with your food. There's a lot of distractions all around us. Okay. But if you can do this, if you can have the sensory experience, you can add a lot of pleasure, a lot of satisfaction to your food. Okay, a lot of food memory, you're imprinting what you're eating. Um, and it helps bridge this, this mind stomach divide that we have, okay? Because we wanna connect our mind and our stomach. Now, what I just described might take 20 minutes per bite. And I don't expect you to do that at every meal. But I do want you, next time you eat anything, try to taste something different about it, okay? Let's say you're eating a brownie tomorrow. Don't swallow it and go on, right? You know, hold it in your mouth for a second, taste, maybe it's a little bit bitter. It's chocolate and it's a little bit bitter. And try to notice if that helps you get more satisfied with your food that you're eating. Um, and because I, I think it does for me really does. So if I taste even just a little bit different, concentrate just on the texture, for example, I'm going to remember that food. I'm going to be more satisfied with that food. Okay. So try to find something new and special with the foods that you eat. Okay. Now there, I mentioned there's a lot of behaviors that interfere with mindful eating, right? There's a lot of distractions going on today. Um, so one of these types of, of behaviors that interfere with mindful eating are treating eating as a chore. Okay. For example, eating while you're in the car, uh, eating while you're standing, eating while you're multitasking, eating in various rooms around the house, right? You're uh, folding laundry in the basement and you're like taking a bite of a sandwich while you do it. Or like this woman in the picture, she's, you know, driving and she's eating a hamburger in the car. All of that just means that you're not treating the meal as something important. You're just tacking it on to some other chore that you have to do. Um, and eating should be important, right? You're nourishing yourself and it should be enjoyable. It should be pleasurable. Um, and instead you're just thinking of it as something else that you have to do, something else in your to-do list, okay? Not a good idea. The next group of behaviors are, are really distracted eating. 
Okay. This includes eating in front of the TV. Um, I don't know about you, but I've done this, sat down with like a big bag of chips. And before the first commercial break, this is before Netflix, uh, the entire bag of chips is gone. And you look down and you're like, I don't, I don't even remember eating that. Where did, where did all those chips go? I'm still hungry. Um, it's because your mind was paying attention to the TV, not on the food that you were eating, right? Um, or eating while you're on the phone. I see this all the time in restaurants and cafeterias, people are just scrolling while they're eating. They're not really paying attention to their food. They're paying attention to their phone. Um, also eating while you're at your work desk. A lot of people have this issue now because you're working from home. And so they're just gonna eat their lunch at their desk at home. It's hard to separate the two, but it just leads to mindless eating, okay? Also eating at a cluttered table, right? If you have to like push stuff out of the way in order to put your plate down, it's distracting. Okay, it's too much for your mind right now. You just, you you're really should just be focusing on your plate, not on the stack of magazines and your kids' projects that are on the table, okay? Uh, third types of behaviors that are uh, interfering with mindful eating are things like eating really quickly, right? I have a lot of patients who say they're done with their meal before their spouse even sits down, um, not chewing your food thoroughly, ignoring thirst until after the meal, um, not giving yourself enough time to like eat and digest, right? You take your last bite of dinner and you're already standing up to move on to the next thing you have to do. You're not giving yourself enough time, okay? It's really important to eat slowly and enjoy, okay? Um, there was a really cool study done in 2015, which really illustrates this point, I think, beautifully, okay? It was about distracted eating. What they did was um, the first group of participants, which is the black column on the left, they were just sat down in a room and they were given food. And um, they, the amount of food they were eating, the calories, and the time spent eating were measured, okay? The second group, the light gray column in the middle, participants were also given food. But this time a TV was put in the room playing the same short segment on a loop, okay? Over and over. Um, so you see, you know, they ate a little bit more, but because their brain didn't really have to focus on the TV, it was the same segment over and over and over again, they weren't that distracted. Now the column on the right, that middle gray column, the dark gray column, um, those people were seated, they had food in front of them and the TV was playing just continuous TV. Right, so they were completely distracted. And you see in terms of calories consumed, in terms of amount eaten, and in terms of time spent eating, they are far and away ate way more than the other two groups because they were distracted, okay? And I think what's most startling about this study is that at the end, all the participants were asked um, to rate their hunger. There was no difference, okay? The people who ate almost half of what the gray column ate were no hungrier at the end. I think it just shows us how distracted eating pulls us to overeating so easily and so quickly without even realizing it, okay? So evidence shows that attentive eating, mindful eating influences food intake. So incorporating mindful eating principles um, can help you with weight loss and health without the need for calorie counting, right? This study wasn't saying what you should eat. It was just showing you that distracted eating can lead to overeating. It doesn't even matter what you're eating in this case, okay? Really, really cool study. All right, I have a poll now and I want people to answer honestly, not how you think I want you to answer, um, but seriously, what would you do here? This is something that happens in my family, okay? So Sunday night football game is on um, and you have this game day ritual and you look forward to it all the time. You sit on the couch, you eat chips, wings, popcorn, and you know that you usually overeat when you do this and you're trying to be healthier, okay? So knowing what we just heard about mindful eating, what are you gonna do? Do you, uh, A, figure you could have a cheat day once a week, it's not gonna kill you, so you just proceed as usual. Um, do you decide to go cold turkey and watch the game without eating anything? Uh, do you take one plate full of food, enough for one serving, and then don't go back for seconds? Or do you bring a calorie-free beverage and some vegetables to snack on instead of your regular, regular you know, chips and wings? Okay, what do you guys do? I know what I would do. Okay, so I love the honesty. Very, very nice to see the honesty. A lot of you would proceed as usual, cheat day, okay? Um, I'll, you know, maybe you need to hear the rest of the presentation to be convinced that mindful eating is the way to go, um, but I get it. These are habits, these are rituals that we have and it's really hard to break, okay? Um, now, interesting, a lot of you would do C, 
Now, I think C and D are interesting, right? Obviously, B is the mindful eating choice. Um, if you can do that, kudos on you. You decide to just be a mindful eater now. Um, but if you can't, if you need to take steps in order to get there eventually, I think both C and D are good ways to do it, okay? Because in C, yes, you're gonna be distracted while you eat, but you're being mindful about the quantity, right? You're only gonna take one plate full of food, so you're not gonna be overly stuffed after. And in D, you're not being mindful about the quantity, but you're being mindful about the quality of the food, right? You're being mindful about the calories that you're eating. <clears throat> so while neither C or D are perfectly mindful, um, they do bring some qualities in. Uh, so I think they're, they're perfectly good stepping stones, okay? Diet, like everything in life, is not black and white. There's no one right way that you have to do things all the time. Um, and you have to give yourself some grace to, you know, do things in steps. It's okay. Okay, moving on. <clears throat> How do I move on? There we go. All right, so now we've spoken about how to figure out if we're hungry or not, or if we're emotionally eating. We've spoken about how to mindfully eat, right? Being really present, um, using all of our senses and turning off all the distractions. And now we're gonna go to uh, step three, right? Feeling full and satiety, okay? Um, so we're gonna go over giving yourself a chance to feel full. Uh, we're going to go over ways to slow down at mealtime and why that's so important. And then we're going to talk about being able to step away from food that's left on your plate. Okay. All right. So first, I wanted to show you what's going on um, biologically. So, you know, what, what are these feelings of satiety that I'm talking about? Okay. So if you look on the left under A, you see um, your heart, liver, stomach, intestines, and lungs all connected by this. Uh, it's like an orangish line. That's your vagus nerve. Okay, it's a cranial nerve, it goes up into the brain and it leads to the feeding pathway and the rewards pathway, okay? So you are, you know, your brain is, you know, is really closely tethered to your other organs nutritionally, okay? So, and if you look at B, this is a close look at how the vagus nerve is really receiving and sending information. In this case, in B, it's the intestines um, where it's getting, uh, you know, different hormones and nutritional status from the intestinal tract and uh, the vagus nerve is taking that and sending it back up into the brain, okay? <clears throat> um, and what's happening, well, there's a lot of things what's happening, but I want to highlight three things that are happening physically, um, ways that your body is going to be telling you that you're full, okay? First, there are, there are stretch receptors in your stomach, and they're activated when food and liquid enter your stomach, okay? Your stomach will expand. Um, and these stretch, stre uh, stretch receptors can send hormones up to the brain, which translate to, I'm full, stop eating, okay? Um, next, uh, the GI tract secretes hormones like CCK that contributes to these feelings of satiety, okay? But for that to happen, the food has to reach the intestinal tract first, right? For these hormones to be released, you have to wait a sec. Um, GLP-1 is another hormone that's produced when nutrients enter the GI tract, and it's modulated by our friend the vagus nerve, okay? Um, and this can slow gastric emptying. It can slow down the motility, the movements in your stomach, the, the emptying of your stomach, and that helps prolong these feelings of fullness. Okay, so if you just gave your body time to connect, to communicate, these hormones would be sending these signals to your brain saying, I'm full, stop eating, okay? Real things are happening here to help you out with that satiety. Um, and another, I just wanna bring this last really cool study in 2018, participants were randomly assigned to eat uh, the same meal, it was a 600 calorie meal, either at their normal pace or slowly, okay, six minutes versus 24 minutes. Um, and their appetite, peptide Y, which is a fullness hormone, and ghrelin, which is this hunger hormone, were measured at baseline, and then every 30 minutes for the next three hours, okay? And then afterwards, participants were given a snack. So this top chart here um, is the, the participants rating their hunger. And you see the solid line, um, those are people who ate at the normal speed. The dotted line were the people who ate slowly, okay? so. The fullness rating, maybe right, right after they finished the meal, the solid line, the normal rate people rated themselves a little bit fuller, but quickly they dropped, right? Whereas the people who ate slowly, they did not drop quickly, right? They first went up a little bit. Oh yeah, actually I am full. And then slowly over time, they gradually got hungrier, but they never got to the place where they were as hungry as the people who ate at the normal speed. Okay, so eating slowly led to greater fullness, even three hours later. And at the bottom, I mentioned ghrelin before, right? That hunger hormone, that was measured as well. So at baseline, both groups 
had the same amount, right? Zero. They weren't hungry. They had just eaten. 30 minutes later, you see a huge gap between this hunger hormone of the people who ate at the normal speed, much higher. They were much hungrier than the people who ate slowly. And that continued on up to three hours later. Because of this, because the people who ate at the normal speed were hungrier, because those who ate slower were less hungry, that snack that I mentioned before, that they got three hours later, they, people who eat slower eat on average 25% less calories, right? Again, showing that it doesn't even matter what you're eating. If you, if you use these mindfulness tips, you're gonna consume less calories, right? Just by eating slower, just by being less distracted. That's all I'm telling you to do. And you could already, already be you know, healthier. Um, all right, so now I've convinced you that you have to eat slow. It's not so easy to do, right? If you're a fast eater, you know, you've tried to slow down and you can't do it. It drives you crazy. So I have some tips. Maybe some of these will appeal to you, okay? One, breathe slowly, breathe deeply throughout the meal. If you finish a meal and you're out of breath, you are eating way too quickly, okay? Breathe deeply throughout. Next, thoroughly chew your food. I mentioned this earlier to increase satisfaction from your food, really to release the flavors, but also just to help you slow down. I know there's some people who recommend uh, counting your chews, 25 chews per bite. Personally, I think that's excessive. I don't think you have to do that, but I do want you to thoroughly chew your food. Don't swallow things whole, okay? <clears throat> it might help you to sip water throughout the meal or put your fork down in between bites. Um, and you're gonna feel kind of weird doing that because it's not natural, right? You take a bite, you put the food in your glass and it, it feels weird, but I guarantee you, it's a very mechanical way of slowing yourself down until you get used to eating at that rate, okay? Um, next, I recommend, I recommend pausing after half your plate is eaten to just assess how hungry you are. I'm not saying don't finish your plate. I'm just saying, give yourself the option, right? Look, oh, I'm, I'm halfway done. Am I still hungry right now? Well, maybe a couple more bites and I'm gonna be done. Or yeah, I wanna eat, get to eat the whole thing. I'm still really hungry. That's fine. But at least give yourself the option, you know, assess where you are in terms of your hunger halfway through your meal. Okay. And then after you finish your plate, let's say you say, I'm still hungry. I want seconds. Just wait 10 to 20 minutes before you get that second helping. Because remember, all those hormones need to travel from your various organs up to your brain to tell your brain that you're full. Maybe you just need more time. Okay. So wait 10 to 20 minutes. And then if you're still hungry, go for it. Then have seconds. Okay. I'm not telling you not to eat if you're hungry, but often you just need time to really sit and digest. Okay. And this last line is in bold because it's important and it sounds so obvious, but you can always eat more later. Okay. You don't have to finish everything on your plate now. Uh, some people were brought up that they had to finish their plate before they left the table as kids, right? Their parents made them do that. Um, if you're one of those people, I am here to tell you now as an adult, you don't have to finish everything that's on your plate. We have Tupperwares, we have Saran wrap, wrap it up, put it in the fridge. And if you're hungry later, maybe you're hungry two hours after dinner, pull it out, have a snack then. But don't feel the need to necessarily finish everything that's on your plate if you're not hungry, okay? Very important. Um, I just like this placement that I found online. It has a lot of the mindful eating tips that we uh, spoke about. So I, you know, you can put this on your fridge, you can print it out, you could just read it over and laugh like I did, right? Really, slow the hell down. It's important, guys. Um, okay, so remember, when you're eating mindfully, it is crucial to maintain that strong connection between your stomach and your brain, okay? I want you to listen to the intrinsic cues like hunger, not the extrinsic cues that are so prevalent around the holiday times, okay? Now, speaking of holidays, let's jump in to some of the challenges that are happening now, this time of year, okay? Um, I've split them into both emotional challenges and social challenges. Um, emotional challenges being a lot of stress, uh, less sleep, anxiety, depression, or celebration. Some people eat because they want to celebrate. Um, there's also a lot of social challenges. There's party after party. There's gifts that always seem to be boxes of chocolates or cookies. Um, there's office treats. If you are working in an office right now, um, I defy you to find an office in this country that doesn't have like little green and red wrapped chocolates somewhere. Um, and also traditions. There's a lot of food traditions this time of year, whether that's latkes or, and jelly donuts or uh, Christmas cookies and eggnog, right? There's a lot of food traditions that we tie up with holidays, okay? 
So let's start with emotional challenges. Okay, let's bring in some of the mindful eating tips that we just learned about um, and bring that into these emotional challenges. Okay, so remember, before you're eating, you're gonna pause and you're gonna think, am I hungry right now? Am I not hungry? Do I wanna eat for some other reason? Okay, if you decide that you're not hungry and that you just feel like eating because let's say anxiety, then you really need to learn to like, tackle that challenge in another way. Ideally, you're gonna get at the root of why you're feeling this way, right? Let's say you have a, a to-do list 10 miles long and it's giving you a lot of anxiety. Ideally, you would tackle something on the to-do list, right? Or if you're exhausted, ideally you would take a nap. It's the best way to deal with being tired, not eating. Um, but sometimes that's not possible, right? Let's say you're at work, can't lie down on the floor and take a nap. <laughs> Wish you could. Um, but even though you can't maybe tackle the root of the challenge, you can still address it in a way that's more positive than eating, right? If you're tired, sip some ice water, take a walk, right? Just two examples. Um, if you're feeling overwhelmed by all these holiday tasks, maybe take a break and put on some soothing music. If you're feeling sad, call a friend, draw a picture, exercise, right? Get some endorphins going. I'm always gonna promote exercise. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of ways to tackle these emotional challenges in a much more positive way than eating. Because remember, eating cookie after cookie is not gonna solve the anxiety that you're feeling, okay? Um, now, if you can't shake that desire to eat, and if you still want to eat in 20 minutes, tell yourself you can eat. Chances are, if you distract yourself for 20 minutes with something else, wrapping presents, and then you come back to it, you're going to say, yeah, I wasn't actually that hungry. If you are after 20 minutes, remember, we don't want you ignoring hunger. We don't want you getting to level five hunger scale. Okay. Then eat. But chances are after 20 minutes of distracting yourself with something, you're going to realize you're not actually that hungry. All right. Another poll. I want to hear from you guys. <clears throat> this is our emotional challenge scenario, okay? So you've been running around, you've been doing errands all day long, um, and you're not sleeping well, and you're really nervous about your family coming over, maybe in a non-COVID world. Um, you're tired, and you're stressed, and you're anxious, and you see a cupcake shop on the way home. Maybe that's going to help you feel better, okay? So what do you do? Do you pull over, get that large chocolate cupcake, and eat it in your car on the way home? Um, do you buy a box of chocolate cupcakes to bring home and you're going to share it with your family after dinner? Or do you decide that you're not actually hungry right now and you're going to just take a short nap or a hot shower or an afternoon walk and then you're going to feel better? Okay, what do you guys do? I know what I do. Um, okay, so... We got mixed answers. Okay, so for those of you, again, answer to A, you're gonna pull over and order that large chocolate cupcake. I've been there, I've done it. Doesn't actually help with the anxiety. Um, you know, five seconds later, that cupcake's gone and you have chocolate crumbs all over your lap and you're like, wow, why did I eat that? Um, but good on you for being honest. Okay, B, you buy a box of cupcakes, bring home and share with their family after dinner. I think that's perfectly fine, right? If you're still hungry after dinner and you want dessert, you're seated at the table with your family and you're going to enjoy a cupcake. Great. Go for it. Um, and also see, right? That's the most mindful answer of all. You're not actually hungry and you're going to take care of it by taking a hot shower and that's going to relax you a little bit. Okay. But these emotional challenges, they come up over and over again in this season. And it's really important to remember and try to figure out at the moment, am I just feeling anxious or sad right now? Or am I hungry? Okay. You got to remember to take that pause. <clears throat> Next. Okay, let's talk about social challenges. Got a lot of tips about these social challenges that come up all the time. Okay. Um, first of all, I know I don't know who needs to hear this, but you're an adult, you have control over what you eat. Another person cannot and should not dictate to you what and when you need to eat anything. I recognize the irony in this. As a dietitian, I do often tell people what and when to eat. But other than your dietitian, another adult should not have that ability. I don't care if Donna at the office party tells you that she's baking the best chocolate cookies and you have to try one. If you're not hungry, you don't have to try anything, okay? You're an adult. It's fine. You can say no. Two, never come to a party hungry. I got a lot of people who say, oh, I'm so excited for this party I'm going to later. I'm going to fast all day long so I can use all my calories to eat later. Terrible idea, okay? Eat something before you get to a party. That way you're not tempted to eat the first thing you see and you're not going to overeat, right? Again, you're going to get to that five on the hunger scale. Never a good idea, okay? I'm not saying eat a big meal, but eat a yogurt, eat an apple, eat a peanut butter sandwich, eat something so that you're not starving, okay? 
<clears throat> Next, bring something healthy and tasty to a potluck. I was just at a potluck. There was penne alla vodka, mac and cheese, baked ziti, and lasagna. How many dishes of pasta and cheese do you need at one party, right? Those were the options. So if it's a potluck, you can bring a salad, you can bring a fruit salad, bring something that you know will be you know, healthy and enjoyable for you. <clears throat> Next, when you get to a party, make a round. Walk around, see what all the offerings are and see what you really want to eat, okay? Because otherwise you're just gonna grab like the first thing you see um, and that's not the most delicious thing to you maybe, okay? So walk around, make a, make a plan. What am I gonna eat first? A plan of attack for your party, okay? Um, then once you decide that you really wanna eat something delicious, enjoy it, okay? Don't stand in the middle of a group of seven people shoveling food in your mouth. Take your plate of food, find a place to sit and eat, you know, like an adult. Um, don't eat distractedly even at a party. It's important, okay? There's always gonna be a seat somewhere. Um, then finally, if you've eaten enough, if you're full, good job. You've recognized that you're full, but you still wanna stay at the party to socialize, great. But keep a drink in your hand. Otherwise, you're just gonna be tempted to just like pick up little bits of food here and there. If your hands are busy, if they're holding something, it's much harder to do that, okay? So I recommend if you're full, keep a drink in your hand for the rest of the party. Okay, let's talk about a social scenario. This happened to me last Thanksgiving. Uh, Peeved me off them and annoys me now, okay? At your holiday party, Aunt Jill bakes an apple pie and she insists you take some because it was your favorite when you were little and she baked it just for you. Uh, but you really want the brownies instead. You don't want Aunt Jill's apple pie. So what do you do? So you grab a slice and eat it in front of her and you regret every forkful, but Aunt Jill is happy. Do you lie? Do you tell you already tried it or avoid her for the remainder of the party? Do you take a small piece of pie and a small piece of brownie? Or do you tell her that you're too full to enjoy it now, but that you're gonna take a piece of pie home to eat later and you're gonna call her after and tell her how delicious it was. I'm not the morality police, so if you wanna lie and tell her you ate it already, that's fine. It's a fine way to go. Um, you can be honest here, okay? <clears throat> In fact, at the time, that's what I did. Oops, um, okay. Oh, wow, nobody's gonna grab that slice and eat it in front of her. Good job, guys, I'm getting through to you. Mindful eating, good. Another adult should not tell you what to eat, okay? 17% um, of you did lie, good, that's what I did. Uh, it wasn't a good idea, I don't recommend it. Um, okay, taking a small piece of pie and a small piece of brownie, you know, you're being somewhat mindful, it's not ideal, you're not getting the whole brownie that you wanted, but at least you're, you know, not eating two desserts that you don't actually wanna eat. Um, and then, of course, the last one, I think, makes everybody happy, right? You're honest. It's what I should have done at the time. Just tell her you're going to enjoy it tomorrow when you actually have time to sit and enjoy the pie, okay? <clears throat> okay. Next. Okay, so I just want to review quickly before we wrap up. What are these steps to becoming a more mindful eater? First, before you reach for anything automatically, stop. Take a moment to notice what you're feeling and what you might want to fill you up. Are you feeling stressed? Are you just bored? Are you angry? Are you sad? Are you physically hungry? Are you feeling those hunger pangs, okay? Now, if your desire is not about hunger, do something else more appropriate for that desire, okay? Um, if you are hungry, good, eat, okay? Savor each bite. Notice the taste, the texture, the aroma. Eat intentionally and only eat. Please put away the distractions. You see how it can lead to overeating, okay? And eat slowly. Eating slowly can also increase satisfaction, increase fullness, okay? And then after each bite, check in with your body. See how you're feeling. Have I had enough? Do I need more? Is it time to stop? If it is, move on, okay? You can walk away from food. It's allowed. Okay. So that's what I have to tell you. If you're interested in learning more about mindful eating or intuitive eating, there's a lot more to learn. There's a lot more to go over. These are two books that are available on Amazon if you'd like to learn more about them. Um, and uh, you know, I re they're, they're really useful tools, right? Again, we didn't talk about calories. We didn't talk about grams of fat or sugar. That's not what this is. This is just how to eat and when to eat, okay? So if you enjoyed this talk and you wanna hear more other talks, um, go to our YouTube channel and search for Doc Heart Health. And uh, there's lots of really interesting things on there. Okay, we hope you enjoy them. Do you guys have any questions for me about mindful eating, about eating in general? So thank you, Sarah. I definitely will take questions. So I do urge you guys to put them into the Q&A because this is your opportunity. I certainly have questions and uh, 
I'm going to definitely take uh, Sarah up on that. But um, <laughs> I'm going to reveal first that, yeah, I'm one of those people who has the planned lie sometimes, perhaps. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's company, fine. Uh, <laughs> it, it works, you know? It works. It does. It works. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I was great. Thanks so much. <laughs> Being from a Greek family that, you know, always wants to very lovingly feed you. Yeah. Uh, when I would go to Greece and I would go to different homes to visit people, every time you arrive somewhere, they wanted you to eat like basically <laughs> three full meals, essentially. Yeah. So I would always say that I, I just ate and they still oh. made you eat, but not as much. Maybe less. So. Maybe less. <laughs> exactly. But uh, this is, uh, you're right. You need strategies, though. You're 100 percent right. <laughs> for the dinner party, for the holidays, for all of these different yeah, come things. Come prepared. Think about it beforehand. Right, right. Exactly. Set yourself up for success. Yes. Yeah, that's great, great advice. And you also um, enjoy it more. You're right, 100%. Okay. And the other thing I realized is with Thanksgiving, I used to, um, you know, as most people do, eat just a very large meal at Thanksgiving, and then I just didn't feel so I realized, you know what? The food is still there <laughs> later. Yeah. So exactly. amazing, right? Not you know, going away. It's not going to disappear. Yes, exactly. You can have a little bit more later on in the day mm -hmm. when you want it, you know? Absolutely. It's a really good uh, lesson that uh, took a long time to learn. So thank you. Yeah. Um, so, you know, a couple of things that I, I wanted to just mention are, you know, people ask about different types of diets. Um, so this is a really good technique for just living in general, I think. And it's a good way to live yeah, your life. It's really with, with any diet, right? If it were, if you are intermittent fasting, fine. Try not to get to the, you know, a ravenous level of hunger. And then when you are eating, eat mindfully. Okay. Still don't be distracted just because you're intermittent fasting doesn't mean you then eat in front of the TV. Right, okay. Right. Or just because let's say you're doing the keto diet, still eat mindfully, you yeah. know, yeah. whatever you're doing, it's a really good habit to get into. Okay. Yes. Um, I think it's a, it's a great one. And, uh, you know, looking at the literature for weight loss in general, um, and we've been discussing this as well, uh, you know, amongst ourselves, the, the reality is that whatever works for the individual is, you know, yeah. what's important for them, um, as long as it's a healthy thing overall. Of course, if you're eating very unhealthy food and that works for you, that's maybe not going to do you so well in other <laughs> areas of your life. Um, but, you know, for some people, it's eating small, frequent meals. For others, it's eating no breakfast. For no others, one right breakfast. way to do it. There's yes, no exactly. So you can individualize it um, as long as, it, again, it's healthy. And the other thing I would suggest to patients is that they um, really do work with a dietitian. I've actually been surprised at how much I learned years ago when I did um, have an individual appointment with a, a dietitian to learn that I wasn't eating enough early in the day and not enough good fats and, uh, you know, yeah. maybe- Sometimes It just takes fresh eyes on your diet and, you know, oh yeah, I do have that pattern of snacking every day at four o'clock. I didn't even, didn't even realize, how are we gonna, how are we gonna get around that? What are we gonna eat at four o'clock that's healthier than the bag of chips that you usually get? Yeah. Right, yes. Uh, so yeah, it's very individualized, wonderful advice that is always helpful um, yeah. to get. So yeah, it's great. And I hope our uh, audience will reach out and definitely meet with someone. So, um, and Sarah specifically, if they'd like. So um, what about keeping a food log is what somebody asked uh, from the audience. Okay. For some people, it's a great idea, right? It kind of keeps you accountable. And again, I just mentioned uh, you have this pattern at four o'clock of eating. Sometimes it just points out to you some eating pattern that you have. Some people find it incredibly helpful. Some people find it incredibly stressful and they dread it and they, they can't do it. I've recommended this to a lot of patients who just, I can't, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna do it. It honestly, it depends. If you are someone who says, I don't even know what I ate yesterday. I kind of just graze and grab things. Maybe for a couple of days, it's a good idea just so you can see what you're eating um, and you can notice some patterns in your eating. If it's going to add any sort of stress or anxiety to your eating, then I don't recommend it. Okay. So it depends on you. Something to say, if you're a, if you're a type A personality, yeah, you're going to love food logging. If you're a type B personality like me, you're going to hate it. So uh, it kind of depends on your personality. It can be a very useful tool though. I think the one time thing, like you said, just to get a sense, uh, one of my patients once came to me and uh, had lost uh, probably like 40 pounds over the course of six months or so. And I was like, you know, what did you do? How did you, you know, manage this? And what he told me is that, you know, I just used one of the apps and I recorded what I was eating. And he's like, I had absolutely no idea that I was eating 
3,500 calories every day. <laughs> I had a patient who did it who didn't realize that over the course of the day, she was eating about a cup of nuts, which is about 600 calories. And she was just like grabbing a couple here and a couple there, quarter cup here, quarter cup there. But it added up to you know quite a bit a fat that she was eating, just not knowing, right? So in that case also, it was very helpful in just pointing out that one thing that she could change. Yeah. Yes, and nuts are dense in calories and they go down, yeah. they're so fat, they down really fast. Yeah. <laughs> Too much of a good thing. Yes, very, very important, exactly. Yeah. And are there snacks that you think, you know, a lot of people have, and everyone's different, again, some people will, and actually I have realized this with friends that were different, like one can eat like nothing all day and just eat a very big meal, another one has to snack all day, you know. Yeah. Um, so in terms of snacks, are there specific healthy snacks that you like or any brands in particular? Um, so my, my first snack recommendation is always a fresh fruit or vegetable. It just is, right? An apple is pretty easy to bring with you wherever you are or like, you know, carrot sticks and hummus. Some people really roll their eyes at me when I say that. Um, so yeah, I, I actually keep a running list and I give to my patients of like healthy snacks you can get on Amazon. Um, but like 100 calorie nut packs, for example, are a great snack. Um, there are some really good bars, right? Like I like kind bars, again, it's a nut bar. Um, things that you can like grab and go pretty quickly. Um, something always with fiber, fat or protein, something to keep you full. Because if you're just gonna grab a bag of potato chips, that snack's gonna, not gonna do anything for you. You're gonna be hungry again 15 minutes later, right? I like to tell my patients, don't count your calories, but make your calories count, which is like, sounds kind of hokey, but it's true. Make your calories do something for you. So if your snack has some fat, some protein, some fiber, it's gonna keep you full. It's gonna keep you going until your next meal, okay? Yeah, this is a lesson that I actually learned myself. And that's what I learned when I went to the dietitian. I thought that because I was eating low fat, that I was healthy. And so I was eating, you know, empty calories, just like you're yeah, describing, not very, very helpful to me. And so that's why I had a headache and that's why I had no energy. And that's why I was I need food. angry. <laughs> angry <yeah. Yes. laughs> Um, so really, I think I started to think instead of, uh, you know, cause a lot of people are like, I'm on a no fat or low fat or no carb or this, whatever, instead of thinking of what you're not eating, perhaps start thinking about what is, how many, how much nutrition did I get? Did I get vitamins? Did I get fiber? Did I get good fat? Exactly. I like thinking in terms of, of macronutrients, right? Did I get enough fat? Did I get enough carbohydrates? Did I get enough protein? Right. I don't care really how many calories you eat. I can tell you to eat 1600 calories. That's two big Macs. It's not healthy right? I care about the quality of your calories. So, you know, I, I very rarely tell anybody to keep track of calories or keep to 1800 calories a day. It's really not helpful. I yeah. will, you know, maybe say under 12 grams of saturated fat a day, you know, if we really need like a heart healthy diet like that. But uh, generally I, I don't do calorie counts. I don't think they're helpful. Yes. There's a really great study that came out a few years ago and they were looking at low carb and low fat diets and they essentially gave uh, recommendations to patients and uh, trying to figure out what would predict uh, you know, outcomes and everything and see if there's any differences. And interestingly, the only thing that really uh, ended up translating into better outcomes is the advice that they gave them. So there was no difference whether you wanted to do low, whether it was low fat or low carb. Um, they essentially told all the people to eat whole foods, natural as much as possible. Yeah. They taught them how to be mindful, sit and eat, sit in groups, you know, healthy eating. And essentially with that advice alone, without telling them to limit calories, they didn't even say anything about limiting anything. Both groups lost weight and uh, kept it off for about a year. Um, yeah, so impressive. Really, yeah, the type of diet doesn't, doesn't matter. Just have right. healthy eating habits across the board. Yes, amazing. Some more questions. This is a very, very intelligent question. I like it actually, because it's, it's very true. It comes up the, and stuff. Uh, and I get it as well. It's sort of like if you yourself are trying to eat healthy, but others are not at the moment, like you're out at dinner or whatever, or vice versa. It's like, how do you make people not feel bad about eating? Social, eating is a very social thing, right? It's yeah. one of the social challenges around the holiday time. Uh, it's hard. Okay. Um, sometimes I tell, I tell my patients, blame me, tell them that like, Sarah's going to call me tomorrow. She's going to ask me and she's so annoying, right? You can always like blame me, but I don't care. Um, but you know, just say, I'm just trying to eat healthy. That looks so good. I'm so happy you're eating it. Really enjoy it. Um, I know that I just, I don't want it right now. I'm, I'm really going to enjoy my 
salmon, right? Don't, don't treat your food like, ugh, I, I hate this and I can't, I really don't want to eat this. I wish I was going to eat it, right? Because treat your food like something you actually want to eat. Because if you don't, then your friends are going to say, well, if you don't even like it, you should eat what I'm eating. Get, get the pizza, right? You should like whatever it is that you're eating. And you should tell your friends that you do like what you're eating. Um, let them know that it's healthy. And you say, you know, and I'm just not going to feel good. Like cheese hurts my stomach. I'm not going to feel good after. Because remember, you're an adult. No one should tell you what to eat or when to eat other than me. Other adults don't have that power over you, okay? So at the end of the day, if they're not happy, whatever. It's their problem, right? You do, you do you. You got to take care of yourself. It's more important, okay? That's right. That's right. I love it. I think this person was sort of thinking more about um, not making the other people the person feel bad so about they, what they're eating. You can say, that looks great. I'm yeah, so happy no, exactly. to enjoy that. You did actually say Nothing that. wrong with it. There's really not. In fact, you can lie. I had that yesterday. I ate pizza yesterday. It was so good. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think that's the way to go. And it's like no guilt for them um, and no guilt for yourself, which I kind of like, uh, you know, what you mentioned earlier, like take away the emotions. Away the food, yeah. food shouldn't make you feel guilty, right? If you're mindfully eating and you choose to eat something, you want to eat that brownie and you're hungry and it's going to be delicious. Yeah. And you enjoy it and you use your senses and you really, you take your time. You really shouldn't feel guilty after it because this is a decision that you have knowingly made. There's no guilt involved. And there's room in, in a healthy diet for a brownie. There just is, right? right. No one is going to have a perfect diet 100% of the time. If that, is, if that is a person, it's not a person I want to know. That's a very boring person, okay? There's room in healthy diets for every food. There's no food that's 100% off limits. No food should make you feel guilty and bad about yourself because then you're just going to spiral. And then you're going to say, well, I ruined today. Today I was bad. So I'm just going to eat ice cream for dinner, right? What, it's not it's not like that there's it's a grayscale okay okay i ate a little bit too much fat maybe as a snack so i'll just have a little bit lighter dinner and i'll get back on track no biggie but if you're gonna eat the ice cream you should enjoy it right if you're gonna eat it anyway well i feel guilty about it you might as well enjoy it okay no guilt that's the perspective to have exactly i think that's where people run into trouble when they something you know trips them up and then all of a sudden they think there's no way back <laughs> but it's not true perfection you have to be give yourself some grace give yourself some flexibility right. because you have a life to live okay right no 100%. i'm here to tell you ice cream's okay yes yes the um another question is about rice cakes and whether they're healthy um caramel cinnamon etc is the question from okay. the audience. so rice cakes plain rice cakes i thought i file under those like empty food they're fine they're really nothing there if you want to like put some peanut butter on it now you're talking now the the sweetened ones um have a lot of hidden sugars often so if you're not in the habit of reading a nutrition label i really urge you to start doing it there's a lot of information on that back panel don't look at calories i don't care about calories look under the added sugars okay um because Sometimes I, I give my, my patients a bank of how much sugar to eat in the day, right? You have 25 grams of added sugar to eat throughout the day. However you want to spend it, it's fine. But let's say you look at that caramel rice cake and there's like 12 grams of added sugar. Do you really want to blow half of your sugar budget on a rice cake? Wouldn't you rather have the ice cream, right? Think to yourself, is it worth the sugar? Like, do we really want to? If you do, good on you. Have the rice cake, right? No guilt. But at least make an informed decision. At least know how much sugar is in it. Okay, because it could be that it's a fine snack, but I would more recommend, like I mentioned before, adding some fiber and some fat to that rice cake, to a plain rice cake, so that you feel full. Because chances are that caramel rice cake is kind of just blow right through you. You're going to use up that energy and you're going to be hungry 20 minutes later. Whereas if you get a plain rice cake, put some peanut butter on it, put some avocado on it, that fat is going to hold you much longer and you're going to feel much more satisfied from it. Okay, even though, yeah, nuts have more calories. I'm not looking at the calories. I don't care about the calories, okay? So don't worry about that. Eat something with fat, fiber, protein to fill you up. Much better snack. I like that. Um, and to address just some uh, concepts that have come up uh, with respect to different types of diets, there's um, you know, the ketogenic diet, the intermittent yeah. fasting. Um, you know, from my standpoint, I've seen, unfortunately, with ketogenic diet, when done in an unhealthy way, of course, it's hard to do the ketogenic diet without eating a lot of animal products. And it's hard to do it, period, like you said. Um, but, um, you know, doing it in that sense, unfortunately, as a cardiologist, what we see is very, very elevated cholesterol levels, which is 
problematic. Um, so we really don't advocate for it. Yes, it does potentially lead to very quick. Yeah, I can't lie. If you do the keto diet, you're, you probably will lose weight and you'll lose quite a bit of weight pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. The, there's a bunch of problems. So like you mentioned, one of them cardiology wise, like your LDL, your bad cholesterol is probably going to spike because what you're doing is you're, you're removing a huge nutrient group. You're removing basically all carbohydrates from your diet. Um, so, and what you're replacing it with is fat. Now, can you eat nothing but salmon and avocado? Sure. Are you realistically going to? No, you're going to have bacon. You're going to have cheese. You're going to have beef. You just are. I mean, I, I see it all the time. Um, while you're losing weight, you're going to be eating these foods and you're going to think, oh my God, this is fantastic. I can eat my cheeseburger without the bun and lose weight, but your cholesterol levels are going to spike. Added to that, think 10 months down the road, are you not going to be eating any potatoes, any apples, any milk? 10 months down the road, you're still going to be doing this? Probably not. You're probably going to go off the diet. Any diet that you can go off of, it's probably not a good idea because you're going to regain that weight probably even more than you had lost, okay? I see this a lot, right? You, you went off keto, you're not in this ketosis state anymore, and you're gonna regain the weight because you broke down and you had a slice of bread. <laughs> it wasn't even crazy. Uh, it's really, really hard to stick to long-term. So any diet I tell, I mean, it's not, I don't even call them diets. Any way that I tell my patients to eat, you don't remove any huge food group because it's just not realistic long-term. Uh, it's not healthy, right? Also, the ketogenic diet doesn't have fiber. Fiber is such an important nutrient. Most of us don't get enough of it anyway. Now you're removing most sources of fiber from the diet. It's just, if it sounds like it's not a good idea, if it sounds too good to be true, eating all this cheese and losing weight, chances are it's not good, right? It's common sense. I, like I like that rule of thumb. Yeah, yeah. No, Got to go with it. It's great. Excellent. Um, so yeah, so I think, you know, some of the key lessons, uh, it sounds like are, you know, slow down, slow down. be mindful and yes, don't have it. guilt. <laughs> None of that. Eat it mindfully, right? Yeah. Enjoy it. We're going to have a brownie. Enjoy it. Don't yeah. even have another TV. I think I'm going to remember your voice actually now. When I'm <laughs> <rude. laughs> it's going to happen. You're going to be like, what are you doing? <laughs> That's wonderful. Excellent. So, you know, in that theme of mindfulness, we are so happy to have had um, Sarah with us tonight. And we're going to continue that theme next time. Next month, we're going to have Dr. Joe Diamond. Uh, he was actually my teacher a couple of years ago when I was in training. Uh, it was more than a couple, but anyway, Dr. Joe Diamond is going to do mindfulness based stress reduction, which we'll need in January. Yeah, after the I need it now. Right? <laughs> Yes, yes, no, absolutely. We may need to pair you guys up at some point with all the mindfulness, but yeah. this has been wonderful. So thank you, Sarah. Thank and you so much. This is so fun. Yeah, we'll be having you back, I'm sure, in the future. Sounds good. Great. And thank you to everybody who joined us, and uh, we'll continue to have these monthly. If you have any uh, input on topics you want to hear, certainly let us know. But thank you for joining us today. And again, you, we have left these on YouTube just so that people who didn't join us live can actually go back and be able to view them. So thank you and happy holidays to everybody. Good night. Good night.